This story is taken from the CommonSenseShow.com, the Dave Hodges Common Sense Show, Freeing America One Enslaved Mind at a Time. The title of the story is The Catastrophic Impact of a Chinese EMP Attack Upon America. The story reads as follows. In 2010, an executive summary from the Federal Energy and Regulatory Commission warned that an EMP would destroy the power grid or at a minimum would seriously damage it. The most malicious threat would be a high altitude electromagnetic pulse or hemp. A hemp attack would have a devastating impact on all the normal channels of government coordination and communication, including intelligence and data gathering assets and nuclear forensics. Indeed, with a severe societal breakdown, the basic continuity of government agencies would be at risk. Under such circumstances, it is judged unlikely that the source of a hemp attack, given even a minimal attempt to disguise it, would ever be known. And who leads the way in the development of EMP weapons? Who has our government officials given unbridled access to the inner workings of our power to? It would be Senator Reed's good friends, the ENN Corporation controlled by the Chinese military. Would we be so naive as to allow an armed Chinese peacekeeping force into American soil in the event that this happened? Former CIA agent Dr. Jim Garrow explains how the actions of an Army General, an Air Force General, and a Navy Admiral who were in charge of safeguarding the nation's nuclear stockpile saved the lives of 300 million Americans from the catastrophic effects of a planned false flag EMP attack on the United States. For the heroic act of foiling this attack, the three military officers were vilified by the Obama administration in public. Top scientists and knowledgeable politicians, e.g. Congressman Trent Franks, tell us that it would cost the nation alone up to two trillion in the first year. It could take four to ten years to recover and would fatally impact ninety percent of the US population, meaning widespread starvation and death. Yet experts tell us the cost to harden the electrical grid would be no more than two billion, several times less than the cost of a single bailout paid to the bankers. What could possibly explain this inaction on the part of the Obama administration, especially after they planned for this event? And why were our enemies, the Communist Chinese, given a front row seat when this event was practiced on November 13th and 14th, 2013? Why are we allowing the Chinese solar energy zones to be constructed next to major energy sources such as hydroelectric and nuclear power? The treasonous implications are so obvious that Ray Charles could see what is coming. When the moment of the EMP attack occurs, what will America look like a few seconds later? Transportation. And one of the most dramatic effects, airplanes would fall from the skies. Untold thousands of people would immediately plunge to their deaths, and their deaths might be considered merciful compared to the fate that the majority of the rest of us would face over the next two years. Most automobiles would not work unless they have all pre-electrical parts. Even then, how long would gasoline be available? Many people on the various subways would be hopelessly trapped depending on the time that an electromagnetic pulse would be released. Hospitals. America would see catastrophic conditions immediately take place in our hospitals and convalescent centers. Within a few days, old age homes would lack the resources and services of the staff to help preserve the lives of those who are virtually helpless. Patients on the operating table would stand a good chance of not surviving. Hospital backup generating systems would be rendered unusable. Food and water would become a scarce resource. Many hospital personnel would walk off from the job by the beginning of the third day. The only medical personnel that would stay would be those that live too far away from home to walk people would not be able to get their life-sustaining medications and services, most of which are electrically powered. Our worst fears would be realized. Schools and Children One of the most tragic developments arising from an EMP attack would be the fate of school children geographically isolated from their parents who have already commuted to work. Reuniting parents and their children would be next to impossible for the majority of Americans who have a 30-minute commute or more to work 
which is approximately 20 miles. In an article published the past year, I identified and detailed the questionnaire which went out to all school personnel which was inventorying staff school individual skill sets such as law enforcement experience, construction, as well as electrical and engineering talents. Sounds like a strange set of skills to be surveying at our public schools. What do the originators of this document know that the rest of us should? If you were a teacher, how long would you stay on the job and ignore the welfare of your family? Getting home and reuniting with family will be problematic. Communications. Your cell phones, your landlines, text, Twitter, emails, and faxes will not work. Nearly all broadcast stations, especially television stations, would go off the air. Due to the high level of computerized automation, the equipment in most radio and television studios would be so completely destroyed that most commercial stations would be damaged beyond repair. Radio studios are actually more vulnerable to permanent damage than many portable radio receivers. When America emerges from the event, the NSA police state surveillance grid would be permanently in place for the extreme martial law dictatorship that will follow. According to a statement of Damon Penn, a DHS official, made to a committee of the U.S. House of Representatives on July 8, 2011, a limited number of critical radio stations are being retrofitted with some EMP protection. However, most of us will be without the benefit of mass communication. Somewhere between 250,000 to 500,000 people will die in the first few minutes. Perhaps as many as 1 to 2 million would be dead within three days. Waterborne Diseases the greatest threat to human survival in the aftermath of an EMP attack is the public's availability to obtain clean drinking water. This access would be greatly imperiled. In 2010, when Haiti was hit by a major earthquake which killed over 200,000 people, the misery did not stop with the survivors. Six weeks following the earthquake, Haiti announced its first cholera outbreak in over a century. The cholera outbreak went on to claim 8,000 more lives. The disease thrives in places where there is insufficient water treatment, poor sanitation, and inadequate hygiene. This is what precisely would happen in most areas following an EMP attack. Keeping drinking water clean and separate from human sewage and other contaminants would prove to be humanity's biggest challenge. Cholera would also prove to be the biggest threat to long-term survival. It is likely that in the 24 months following the event that most people would succumb to cholera and other waterborne diseases. Cholera is a horrible disease which grants its victims a very painful and agonizing death. In the 20th century, human lifespan in the United States increased by 35 years. 30 of those 35 years was due to improvements in sanitation. Following an EMP attack, effective sanitation would all but disappear. Access to water. Human beings require approximately two liters of water per day in order to survive. If we do not get that water, we will die in approximately five days. With regard to an EMP attack, our water supplies are especially vulnerable. The power to distribute water is highly concentrated within the United States. Only eight municipalities provide 82% of the drinking water in the United States. There are multiple technologies which are used to pump water from the source to its final destination. Some require no electricity, however most do. And even if your water system was powered by non-electrical means, how would the personnel and staff who monitors and maintains your water supply get to work without proper transportation? In all of Southern California, the water must make its way over mountains. What will happen when all electricity is gone? The resulting casualty rates stemming from civil disorder and death due to lack of water would be unimaginable. In a time of an EMP attack, the availability of water as well as the safety of water would come into question for the vast majority of Americans. The availability of clean water supplies would be the most critical threat and would claim the most victims. These grim possibilities makes one wonder why T. Boone Pickens is buying up the Ogallala Reservoir. What does he know that the rest of us should know? Food. The food supply would be imperiled as well. What do crops need to grow? With hydroelectric power gone, where would the water come from for many food growing regions in the country? 
our food supplies would dry up and disappear, thus exacerbating the threat. Most people will perish within 30 days of famine, thus making water shortages the greatest threat to survival. How bad will it get? Sociologists tell us that there are five levels of societal development. 1. Nomadic hunting and gathering. 2. Horticulture and pastoral. 3. Agriculture. 4. Industrial. 5. Post-industrial. Much of America is entering into the post-industrial phase. An EMP attack would reduce most Americans to a violent existence in the first stage, nomadic hunting and gathering. Without easy access to water, most would not be able to maintain a horticulture and pastoral society for long, and those that did would face dire threats from those seeking resources. This would make the death curve for the elderly and the infirm skyrocket. Child mortality would dramatically rise. A pre-revolutionary war existence would largely be out of reach because of the lack of obtainable clean water. Water is the organizing foundation for any society. Society as we know it would collapse. Conclusion I have read the Naval War College projections which tell us that within two years of the event, 90% of all Americans would be dead. In the linked video, Congressman Franks predicts a 60% mortality rate. The fact remains that nobody knows for certain how many of us would perish. However, it is safe to say that most of us will die. Both Steve Quayle and Doug Hagman have been warning about the dangers posed by Chinese troops on our soil. In the linked video, feast your eyes on what many say could not happen. Chinese troops on American soil. For a mere $2 billion, the United States has the ability to mitigate most of the damage of an EMP attack. It is the height of treason to not make this national defense priority number one. And then to make matters worse, we give the Chinese the keys to the car when we invite them to participate in a drill which allowed them to see how to take down the grid. Don't you just love and admire the patriotism of Senator Harry Reid for promoting and profiting from the Chinese solar zones which now provides the Chinese with easy access to our energy suppliers? End of article.